Network Group, you're having an amazing day. And today we're going to be talking about the TWAB deliberately because it just came out. And also this it's actually pretty good. So we're going to skim through it like we normally do because it's fairly long. And I'm going to try my best not to make this 20 minutes, even though normally it ends up being 20 minutes anyway. So first off, last week we had was a tough week. We appreciate all of you who shared the kindness and empathy towards with those who affected at the studio. We talked a little about our path forward to the final shape last week. We will continue to give our give our all, and we have the confidence that the final shape expansion will be an expansion that everybody wants to experience. There will be episodes to follow the, with more adventures ahead, and as tough those past few weeks have been, we will have determined as ever to make Destiny the best game it can be for your players. We've got some more topics in this tour to get to, but I also want to thank everyone for all the support and the community show us. Let's get back into it. Okay, so with that, I'm assuming that's going to be the only thing to talk about i feel like in my opinion specifically because even if it is a leak at a time like this to where a a delay of the final shape could be such a big deal and this rumor is so well spread they should definitely confirm or deny this with the quickness um i even saw a tweet from destiny bulletin that they apparently took the date out of their bio which basically confirmed it, but I'm pretty sure they put it back in after that. So who knows? But in this twelve, we got Season of the Wish announcement, Crucible Strike Team update, Season 23 Ritual Weapon preview, and a Weapon Pool updates. Okay, so let's read this. One final wish. Earlier in the week, we watched as many people solved the final puzzle of the Embargo Engine, a treacherous vault deep with Sabbath and Spire, or deep within Sabbath and Spire. After obtaining an uncorrupted arm, Kara egg, the Guardian deciphered an information that Witch Queen promised. The pattern in her wings showed as an undiscovered 15th wish and means to enter the portal of in the witness made in the traveler crucible strike team update earlier this update we shared the news of the crucible strike team efforts to improve the overall pvp experience since then we've shared several updates including info on spawning changes matchmaking tweaks and more today we're taking a lot a look at new team announcements before explore, exploring the season 20 changes in the crucible playlist experience and then continued goals of this initiative okay Road to season 23. Crucible Strike Team, everyone. Hey, everyone. We're happy. We're here. Look, cut it out. Make a mistake. Got to get cut out. Crucible Strike Team. Hey, everyone. We're here to give you an update on our efforts to update the Crucible experience. Let's preface by clarifying that these are not all things that we've been we were working on. Nor are they. Hey everyone, we are here to give you an update on our efforts to update the Crucible experience. Let's preface this by clarifying that these are not all the changes, all the things we're working on, nor are they all that we will be shipping in season 23. So this is basically saying that this is not all the things we're shipping and these are not all the changes coming. So that said, these are all features that we will feel have the most significant impact on the overall Crucible experience. These features include rewards, matchmaking, playlists, and boats. One of the first things you'll notice in season 23 are the update to the crucible menu we are reintroducing 3v3 quick play so skirmish is coming back from d1 you love to see it introducing 6v6 and quick play node that consists of 6v6 party and relentless okay rotating control modes in the new 6v6 unranked playlist revisit revisiting uh revising which modes rotate in through each node okay i'm excited for skirmish to be back honestly it's not i'm assuming it's not going to be just skirmish yeah of course skirmish was clash with 3v3 but it's going to be 3v3 game modes so i call it skirmish uh the updated notes are prioritized different matchmaking elements integrated varied gameplay rotations and some will host pvp events like iron banner and trials with sires here's how each node functions 3v3 quick play prioritizes connection and latency rotates to weekly modes and will start in season 23 with elimination and showdown trial takes over this node when active 3v3 rank prioritizes matchmaking, but if rank and skill are widely different, it blends the two. As an example, an adept skill player with a platinum rank will be playing with other platinum rank players. However, if an adept skill player is playing down at silver rank, there will be matched with gold rank players or low platinum rank games. Okay. Affects competitive division rank. Got it. Random playlists including survival, higher weight, and countdown rush, lower weight. I kind of do love countdown rush. Countdown rush is kind of fun. 6v6 unranked, prioritize connection, latency, and skill for loose skill based match tricking. I'll take it. Rotates through the different variations of control, including control, checkmate control, sparrow control, and momentum control. Iron Banner takes over this node when active. Okay. 6v6 connection. Oh, 6v6 quick play. 
Prioritizes connection and latency, rotates through weekly modes, consolidates party in relentless modes, free for all, prioritizes connection latency, crucible labs, and private lobby. Okay, so if you guys didn't check what I just said, Sparrow Control. They really turned what happened on that new map. I forgot what the map is called. I can never remember Destiny Maps, but the new map that takes place in the Vex um, network where there were sparrows everywhere, it turned it into a map, a game mode. Now, if they could just take this, I'm assuming this is just going to be regular control with sparrows on the maps. But if this is, I don't know if y'all played D1, but there was a game mode. I can't remember what the game mode was, where it was control on like huge maps, huge maps. And you had sparrows, you had like the freaking cabal tanks and stuff. Like the mini tanks, can't remember what they're called. But it was fun. And I've been asking them to bring this back. But the problem is they don't have big enough maps. They could use the junction. The junction with sparrows wouldn't be that bad. Just saying. Okay. 3v3. Regarding the 3v3 ranked competitive mode, we've decided to simplify it by reducing the number of game modes in the playlist, cycling between one deathmatch mode and one objective mode. As such, Countdown Rush is leaving the labs and entering competitive and subjective mode, and Survivor will be the deathmatch mode of Season 23. Meanwhile, the 3v3 quick play node will rotate through Elimination and Showdown for Season 23. Rift is set sitting on the bench for now, but may very well return to the starting lineup in the future. We also plan to look at adding more game types into the 3v3 quick play rotator in the future, along with potentially experimenting with testing rule sets and spawn changes for Trials of Osiris and competitive maps. Okay, so if I'm remembering correctly, Countdown Rush is Demolition, right? Or is that just regular Countdown? I can't remember. Anywho, I like all versions of Countdown anyway, so it don't matter. Um... As mentioned above, this is 6v6 by the way, the 6v6 unranked node will rotate through different variations of control in addition to the original control. These variations are simply control with a modifier. The core mode rules, rules remain the same while the sandbox is slightly altered. By rotating through modified control modes, we are segueing into a future where we mix and match modes and modifiers and enables players to do the same. This is a long-term goal and we'll talk more about it later in the point of time. The new 6v6 quick play mode is the consolidation of the party and relentless rotators of the past. It simplifies the numbers of 6v6 modes available and maintains the par parity of 3v3 nodes. Okay, Sparrow Control. All right, then they got into us here. Here we go. Sparrow Control. One of the rotating control modes is, is Sparrow Control. It's control, but with sparrows, the bug became a feature, as we said. We hope you'll enjoy the select weeks of Season 23. Keep an eye out for a unique metal that will only be attainable during these weeks. This mode's playlist maps will be curated and weighted towards larger maps. Okay. So I'm assuming they're not going to make maps like they in D1, unless they want to port those to D1 too, from D1 to D2. It was Combined Arms. That's what the map game was called. It was called Combined Arms. If they could bring some Combined Arm maps to D2 and put them in this game mode. Checkmate. We plan to make Checkmate Control the primary control mode for the first few weeks of season 23. To be transparent, Checkmate... Uh, has revealed and highlighted a community desire for a refined sandbox and crucible. We are eventually one to take some time, some of those lessons, and learn and apply them to the base crucible experience, not just as a labs mode. We are not ready to slap checkmate onto everything just yet, but we are ready to expose the modifier to a larger audience and gather more feedback and data. Some changes and features relate to checkmate in season 23. The ability cooldown has been decreased from 50% to 30%, so there'll be a little bit more abilities. Note, this is based on some cha tuning changes coming in Season 23. As always, we will be monitoring this closely to see how it plays and will adjust accordingly. Crucible Labs will include Checkmate 3v3 Clash, Checkmate 3v3 Countdown Rush, Trials. Labs will include Checkmate Dominion. We will also be making additional mid-season tuning adjustments based on feedback. Dog, so we going... I might... Checkmate Dominion don't... And Trials? That don't sound that bad. We might actually get to a situation where we don't got to worry about bubbles on the points no more. Let me find out. I don't got to worry about bubble titans and well warlocks and trials. That super that's been running trials for the past like year and some change. Ever since 30th anniversary. Who knows? Matchmaking and skill. In addition to skill compression, we are making adjustments to how our matchmaking and skill systems work on the back end. In previous posts, we mentioned to fix lobby balancing, and the last the time has come. In season 23, the lobby balancer should be more appropriate, like a snake draft, and then a team A gets first pick, team B gets next two picks, and a team two, team A gets next two more picks. 
so on, so on, so on, so there are no players left. Fire teams can sometimes throw off balance with balance of the lobby. While this system attempts to resolve that as best possible, there are edge cases where the balance will not be perfect. Regarding skill, in Season 23, we will be able to tune our confidence rating per playlist. Confidence in glico based systems is the way of measuring how sure the system is in player dem demonstrated skill. The more matches player a player plays, the more confident the system will be in de determining where the player's rating is. Sometimes the system can be so confident that it won't budge or it takes a lot for it to budge. It just knows how good you are relative to your peers and based on how you played, but that's not always true, is it? Sometimes players have off days. Sometimes they want to play off meta. Sometimes they want to play an alternate class that isn't their go-to. As such, our plan is to tune the, this confidence rating so that skill rating has more variance from match to match. As of now, we're only targeting the control playlist. With these matchmaking changes, we hope to allow a wider range of skill and lobbies while maintaining match fairness. We also hope players will feel more comfortable playing how they want to play, be it casually, off meta, or intensely competitive without feeling like they're stuck in a particular skill bracket. Okay, so this is good for the players that want to just who sometimes try hard and do amazing things and they want to break out a build that they saw on YouTube that freaking true Vanguard or Kami Cakes come out. It's like, yo, this is such an off meta build, but it's so good. And you use it and you're in freaking sweaty lobbies or people are teabagging you for walking around the corner. So they can try off meta builds that may not be the best, but they're still fun to use. That's good. They won't be punished because they're they had amazing games the past couple of games and now they want to try like using a sidearm and a sniper rifle or a sidearm and a shotgun or two special weapons in pvp and get punished for it like they're dog water so like i said good change map spawning in october 12th twid we touched on the previous spawning changes that revealed back in season 21 were experimental well we experimented with certain spawn changes and clash and control while the changes did achieve achieve more variance and unpredictability in spawn points it did not prevent players from spawning out of sight of other players in dangerous projectiles such as supers since then we've begun experimenting with new features for spawning system these will ho hopefully give us the variance and unpredictability while also avoiding spawn trapping and peaking issues these features will still in development but we'll do we'll definitely revisit the topic soon in the meantime let's talk about changes that are meant for the release and the immediate feature we also have some tuning lined up for several maps midtown meltdown and endless veil thank you lord for freaking midtown midtown and meltdown thank you these changes will be more subtle along with the lines of previously mentioned alter flame and cauldron changes with these changes where they are not intended to completely solve the spawn trapping issues they are intended to work on the conjunction work in conjunction with set of changes planned down the line this goal is to improve the overall experience of spawning players in a safe and less predictable manner okay so they're basically saying, hey, we're going to work on fixing spines. It's not going to fix it 100%, but it will work in tandem with the changes that are coming in the future. Now, I don't know about y'all, but there's definitely been multiple times where I die, spawn in, and then run into the guy who just killed me, who ran around the corner and sees me spawning in again. There's also been times when I die, spawn in, and as somebody who's throwing just a random freaking Dawn Blade, I spawn in and the Dawn Blade mag next to me. <laughs> so... Yes, please fix these spawns. <laughs> Moving on. Let's talk competitive. Ooh, we getting juicy. Let's talk competitive. We've made several changes to the competitive division, including rank adjustments, promotions, relegations, modes, and mode rules. Competitive rank adjustments. In season 23, we're making some changes on how rank points are adjusted in post-match. In general, we're simplifying the formula and putting more emphasis on wins and losses. The major of points are as follows. Okay. We're removing the performance factor. Wins or losses are what matters. We're removing the inflation, inflation protection. We'll no longer reduce your rank points if you rank and seed your skill. We'll retain the inflation protection. So if your rank is a bit low your skill, it will accelerate you upward. Ultimately, we expect rank to correlate with skill, but we won't be so heavy handed about it. We hope those changes will make point gains and losses feel more consistent. There are definitely moments and people who play competitive know because I've actually been attempting futilely not really tempting but i have been attempting to try to hit ascend of this season because i have nothing else to do and there's some times where i'll gain like 200 300 points and then there's time that i'll gain six points <laughs> and then there'll be times when i lose five to two to three hundred points and there'll be times when i'll win seven or three points it's, it's annoying <laughs> so hope this fixes it um maybe it's because i've performed not as good that i normally do so they didn't give me as much points who knows i don't know Overall, I hope that goes away and let's move forward. 
Promotions and relegations. We're removing the promotion and relegation series requirements for all divisions except Adept and Ascendant. Going forward, you will only need to prove your skill when entering the most elite of ranks or keeping yourself from dropping out of them. For example, if you are Platinum trying to reach Adept, you will enter the promotion series. Conversely, if you're Adept trying to drop into Platinum, you'll be, you will be able to defend your place via relegation series. Okay. In conjunction with the rank adjustment changes, we hope smooth out. We hope to smooth out the climb to your intended rank while maintaining some amount of the prestige accepted to of the division. Okay, expected of the other additions. Okay. Okay, so this is cool. Um, promotion and relegation. So they're basically, like I said, they're getting rid of the like win three games, win two out of three games to up, and that's pretty good. Um. I understand why they're keeping it for adept and ascendant because they want to make sure you belong here when you get here because you get some juicy stuff and i'm pretty sure they're upgrading the amount of stuff you get from getting to these ranks in the first place so if they want to protect people that are getting it the prestige of getting these ranks every season they deserve to be protected so if you don't really deserve to be there you don't need to be there and if you deserve to be there you'll win your relegation series so pr promotion or relegations i'm sorry mode rules we briefly discussed the two competitive modes survival and countdown rush now let's go over the changes in the rules increase spawn count from four to six seconds okay in survival and countdown rush point to points to win have been decreased from six to five we've decreased the round time from 120 seconds to 90 seconds this time we'll refresh for every with the second bomb okay okay so this is okay this is demolition mode okay 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 uh Due to this round time decrease, we've also decreased the heavy ammo spawn rate from 90 seconds to 60 seconds. Respawns revives are enabled and are unlimited. If the game goes to 4-4, the final round will be an elimination rule set enabled. This will also show up as sudden death. In general, we made these changes to normalize the pacing time across the two modes. This is good. Trials of Osiris rewards. I'm all for rewards, but can we get some bubble and well changes? And I better not see a conditional finality nerf in this twelve. Or I'm a, I'm a riot. I don't even have to riot. Cause if the, if it was in here, I would have saw it already because people already would have been rioting. But let's go. In season twenty three, we're making a small change to trials rewards in preparation for some larger changes coming alongside the final shape. We also have we will have more details to share closer to those later. Oh. <sighs> In season 23, we're going to be making some small changes to trials rewards in preparation for some larger changes coming alongside the final shape. We also have more details to share on those later in the line. In the meantime, we're going to be adding a set of small weekly rewards that trigger depending on how many wins you've gotten in a row before your card becomes flawed. There will also be one for three, four, five, and six wins in a card. If you get higher wins total, you'll get all the tiers below it too. These rewards will be granted in the post-game loot system stream when your card becomes flawed and they're currently set up to grant. Okay, so for three wins, you'll get a trials armor. For four wins, you get five enhancement cores. For five wins, you get trials weapons. And for six wins, you get three enhancement cores. I mean, one trials weapon, of course, by the way, I'm sorry. These weapons, these rewards are only for the first step in our journey to make trials more rewarding and experience for those who cannot go flawless consistently. We've also increased the drop rate of adept weapons on seven win cards after flawless become at a flawless back up the level it was in the flawless pool existed that is good in addition to those rewards you're also going to be running a weekend of trials labs where the checkmate modifier will be active in the playlist we all we look forward to seeing how this shakes up in a more competitive setting than just standard crucible labs okay when we introduced unique weapons for competitive rewards we were keen to make sure that the folks had very cool powerful and ultimately attainable weapons for competitive play right out the box Lo and behold, that's exactly what we got. Rose and Mercurial Overwatch, Overreach, both showing up among the top 10 weapons used in trials, access across many weekends these last few seasons. However, there's a pretty clear elephant in the room. Anyone who wasn't there when those two initial seasons doesn't have access to some of the most reliable guns in the sandbox. Once those weapons go, have gone away. Enter competitive focusing. Or we could focus. Hoo, hoo. This focus system breaks some new ground for us. We want to make sure that we didn't lose the identity of those weapons as being part of the crucible, and more importantly, as a reward for climbing a competitive ladder. It also stood for the reason that if folks were going to earn those weapons, we'd want them to be active in the competitive scene. The same way players earn focus rewards from other modes like Iron Banner, Nightfall, or Trials. 
where you can study the possibility of another cipher or using a different currency that tied into the identity of these weapons, such as Ascendant Alloys. Ultimately, we decided that these rewards were testing your, were for testing yourself against a tough opponents and working your way up the ladder. Participating in competitive should be the key to earning them. In Season 23, all retired competitive weapons will be available to focus from Shaq's legacy focusing menu. However, it is not as simple as having enough engrams on hand. Shaq expects you to test your metal too. You will be only be able to focus them once you've completed your placement matches. Unlock the focusing options, you will need be limited to the number of weekly focuses based on the highest rank you've achieved so far this season. Ooh. So basically, the higher the rank, the more times you get to focus per week. So for copper, you get one focus. For two, for bronze, you get two. For silver, you get three. For gold, you get four. For platinum, you get five, etc., etc. This cap on how many how many you may focus can be changed midweek, but only if you rank up. Every week to keep focusing, you're also going to have to finish your weekly matches. Don't worry that we won't ever decrease the number of weekly focuses you get during a single season. The max rank you will earn will always be the count against, will always be what counts against. So if we have a rough week and unlucky streak, we won't be punished at the prize counter. Okay. Last but not least, the price of these weapons are intended to, to be some of the most reliable weapons for Crucible play available. And as such, we consider their value to players similar to adept weapons. Uh oh. Since Guardians are already committing themselves to regular engagement competitive play, we're going to rate for focusing these weapons will be three Crucible Engrams and 2,500 Glimmer. That's fine. I got scared as soon as they said stuff close to a death weapon. I was like, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> we're good. As always, we're going to continue monitoring the adjusting and adjusting drop rates of materials and engrams to ensure players at all levels can reasonably spend their competitive focusing uses. Now go out and make Shaq proud. Okay, this is a great change. Cause I know plenty of people who don't have the rose roll they want. I know plenty of people who don't have the mercurial overreach roll where they want. Now I am interested because they did not say anything about this. Are you? Are we still getting the free one every three wins or three games we play? That'd be cool. I hope so, but we'll see. More to come. As mentioned above, this isn't everything we're shipping in season 23 and beyond. There is also an Iron Banner tribute, a Relic Mode revisions, and a reprisal to the Dreaming City Crucible map, the Citadel. We're looking forward to sharing your additional updates in the future, including increasing its ritual activity post map rewards. More glimmer, more enhancement cores. Great. There's a lot happening, and there's a lot, plenty more we wanted to do, so please pardon our deaths as we continue improving the Crucible experience. This is good. This is good. I'm happy the Crucible is getting attention. You love to see it. Ritual Weapon Preview. Oh God, it's a casting sword. Ritual Weapon Preview. Season 23 is just around the corner, as a, and it's time to show off the new Ritual Weapon, which will arrive on November 28th. Let's cut to the chase for bringing a sword. Man, don't nobody care about no caster sword, man. It's gonna be another freaking Ritual Weapon that nobody uses. <laughs> Chivalric Fire will be the first Void Casting Sword. It can roll with void perks like repulsive brace and stabilizing rounds, which will give a high uptime on void overshields. It also has attrition orbs, which is a new perk coming in season 23. Attrition orbs, dealing sustained damage creates an orb of power. Of course, this combos perfectly, perfectly with relentless strikes. As always, you can take your own pick on how you earn it, choosing between Vanguard, Crucible, and Gambit. Each path will also unlock a special ornament for the weapon in by ritual. Okay, so I'm definitely going to get this in Crucible because I play Crucible the most. It's probably going to be Crucible and Vanguard and I'll never get in a game because I don't play Gambit anymore. <laughs> in addition to adding the new visual weapon, we've also had some other changes to the weapon pools in Season 23. Here's a look at what's coming in and what's moving on. Okay, so what's leaving is the Immortal Submachine Gun and Astro Horizon. I ain't never been happier to see that. New, okay, so the Incisor Strand Adapted Trace Rifle Trials and returning the Eye of Soul Kinetic Adaptive Sniper Rifle as a cast sword foundry weapon. Ooh, pretty cool. So we got a, a trace rifle and a sniper rifle coming back. I believe the Mementos, the, uh, the Immortals submachine gun is gone. So you can't get it no more. I'm pretty sure that was last week was last week. And Astro Horizon, I think it has another drop. So get that if you can. Iron Banner. Leaving the Dark Decider auto rifle and the Gnorr Axe, Gnorr's Axe Slug Shotgun. Missing with Dark Decider, Gnorr's Axe is actually pretty good from what I hear. New, Lethal Abundance Strand High Impact Auto Rifle. 
Returning the Reese Walker Kinetic Lightweight Shotgun. I already have the God Roll. I already have my freaking firmly printed, firmly planted Iron Reach and Quick Draw Iron Reach Rolls. So I'm cool, but maybe they'll bring some new juice. Who, who, who do I know? Nightfall, leaving the Buzzard Sidearm, the fan favorite Swarm Machine Gun. Nobody cares about the Swarm. I'm assuming they put this in there because they know that nobody cares about this machine gun. New. The undercurrent arc wave frame breach loaded grenade launcher and returning is the Uzume arc adapter sniper rifle. I know my friend Drain's gonna love this thing. He's been itching to get an Uzume to the point where I was farming with him for the last week before it went away and I got the role he wanted and he kicked me from the clan. Um, player support. Mm, just saying you guys know now this, this is what this basically saying. Uh, since there's been daylight savings, weekly reset will be at 12. Am I correct? <laughs> Yeah, beginning November 5th, 2023 in the United States, Destiny 2 daily and weekly reset time have been updated to 9 a.m. PST. So yeah, 12 PST, 12 EST if you're in that situation. So yeah, we have a good one. I appreciate you guys being here. Thank you, thank you so much for coming through. This is a long swab. Um, I'm gonna try and cut it up to this only the important part. This, I'm letting you guys know, this recording is 35 minutes right now. 35, this is a big one. I doubt I can tell this down that much. So I hope you have a good one. Thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate you, appreciate you, appreciate you. And remember, I love you. And remember, stay spooky. Peace. Love you. Bye.